All right, thank you. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name is Sarah Kritzler. I work as a data scientist in uh, Duisburg Essen in the university library, where I mostly specialize on bibliometric analyses. Um, and over the couple of last couple of months, we have been um, developing a tool and app that we call Biblio Reports, um, which is meant to build customized bibliometric reports for scientists. This tool, um, as a general warning, is not live yet. Uh, we are like right in front of the first big testing phase, um, but I will show you a live demo later. I just don't have a link that you can personally try to uh, use it yet. So um, a quick background. Um, in the bibliometrics team, um, our task usually is to create individual bibliometric reports and analyses um, upon request. So be it the, um, a general um, organization unit at the university, individual researchers, um, research teams that just contact us and say, we need analyses on X, Y, Z, and we do, do that. However, this service is not very widely known yet because most people don't really know what to um, imagine when they hear bibliometrics. So they usually don't really know that they need it or if they need it. And also the requests and personally, like making us do this individual analysis is a pretty big hurdle for them. So our idea was to establish a more low threshold automated service for bibliometric analyses that can familiarize people with these analyses, give them a first intro to it, and then maybe they know if they want to contact us for further stuff. And this tool is going to be our Biblio Reports app. So we, um, this app, provides customized DORA compatible bibliometric analyses and reports. And we put a big emphasis on, for one, being transparent about the coverage and the data quality and giving people indicators so they know how to judge the results. And also we try to educate people regarding the cans and cannots of these analyses. So they know or learn, for example, what they can and should use an H index for and what they shouldn't use it for. And very importantly, we always stress that the purpose of this whole tool is exploration so that people learn about bibliometric analyses and can explore their own bibliometric profile. It is not meant for evaluating the quality of a researcher or their work. So how does this work? I will go to the live demo very quickly, um, but just as a general pointer, um, the publication and citation data are loaded live when people use the app. We have two routes for that. Either they enter their personal ORCID, which we will then send directly to OpenLX and retrieve publication data, or they enter their institutional ID, which we then send to the university bibliography, get the publication data from there, but then um, use the DOI to retrieve further information via OpenLX. Once these data are loaded, people can, uh, our users can then select the elements they want to be included in the report. So they have full control of what is shown and what is not shown, um, and then explore the results in the app, learn about the analyses, and eventually download this report as either an interactive HTML file or a traditional PDF file. In line with recommendations such as DORA or recently also COARA, we try to focus not only on citation data um, impact factors, and that's it, but provide a very rounded uh, bibliometric profile and analyses. So we have these five broad um, areas. We have the general author profile. We have information about publication activity, so number of publications, but also open access publications, publication types, and so on. We have citations where we tra uh, combine traditional citation indices with alternative metrics. We have information about collaborations where we showcase national and international collaborations as well as collaboration networks. And we also include, include some in, um, information about research topics such as research fields, topics, interdisciplinarity um, and sustainable development goals. As some like very broad technical details, um, this whole application is a Shiny app based on our code that I'm writing, um, which will be um, dockerized and then hosted on our own server structure. And uh, eventually we uh, plan to um, make the code as well as probably the Docker container openly available. 
And with that, I'm just going to quickly go to the live demo and hopefully it will not fail on me today. So um, this is our app now um, and we will immediately go to start configuring our report. Um, as I said, we can enter either um, identifier and I will be using my very personal ORCID, not because I'm very self-centered, but because I was the only person to agree to this today. Um, so um, once I enter this, the publication data are fetched. I preloaded this to um, make it be very quick today. It usually takes about like one to five minutes to load the data, depending on how many publications people have. And now I have um, a preview and a short explanation for all of the things that I can have analyzed. Um, and I will just quickly check everything and then show you in detail when we open the report. So we go through all of this ask for all of the analyses, and then I can show you in detail in a second. While I'm um, doing all of these um, ticks, the analyses are being prepared in the background. This is why I make people tick everything individually so that we now have a very quick loading time once we get here. So this is the um, report that people can see. We have, again, these five broad areas. Um, so for example, this here now is the bibliometric profile. First, we give like an overview of the figures, number of publications, academic age, uh, number of public citations, age index, as well as some like what we call author badges of broad topics. So we, for example, can now look here and see that I personally have five publications as a first, first author and seven as a co-author in the middle position. Um, and so on for like publication types um, and all of the other areas that will also be showcased in detail later. Then we list some of the author metadata. Um, most of them come directly from OpenAlex, but we also, for example, calculate the average number of co-authors per publication. We also show a list, a publication list, so that people can see um, directly which publications we got from OpenAlex and are included in the analyses. If they want to figure out if something is missing, they can look in here directly. So on to the next area, we have the publication activities. So first we see the number of publications over time um, and how they gather, hopefully. Then we also have publication types, which for me is not very interesting because I only published a few articles, but for some people that could also be um, book chapters, books, and so on. We can explore the open uh, the proportions of open access publications and always get like additional information on mouse over, which is very nice and feels very interactive. And we also have, for example, um, the um, gender publication gap within the publication. So uh, in my case, um, as I was working in a more female dominated field, we had more female authors and male authors, but that can vary quite a lot from person to person. In the next area here, we now have the citations and mentions. Um, so we have the number of citations over the years. Um, you can see that 2020 for me was a very successful year uh, for some reason. We also have um, the traditional citation indices that are described um, in the text and also shown in this graph so people can understand where an H index, for example, comes from. We also try to give different indices to have uh, for people to understand what how they might be interpreted and how they shouldn't. So we have the G index and I10 as well. And we also provide information on the alternative metrics, which we get from a paper bus. So here, for example, we can see that quite a lot of my research was mentioned in Wikipedia articles, uh, which is uh, because we had one publication um, on the COVID app in Germany. This now next page is usually a very popular one with um, our users, um, which is collaboration. So first we see this uh, court diagram of um, the frequent co-authors where you can explore like how people work together and which persons I have worked together with most, which we can also see in a network view, um, which is very nice because usually we can directly identify different research groups or university in here. Um, 
and people can also explore where people are coming from and who's working with whom. Then we also showcase um, the national collaborations and collaboration partners in Germany. We can get an overview of um, all of the universities I've been working with and the people I've been working with most. And we also show the international collaborations in all of the countries that people have collaborated with. And finally, on this page, we see some like topical thematic information. Um, so we use the uh, topics from OpenLX to show, first of all, the broader fields of research, so discipline and subdiscipline mostly. Um, you can now start guessing what I did my PhD about. Um, so we have here the broader ones and then the more detailed research topics um, that I have been working on um, to give people an overview of their like thematic focus. We also see the development of the most frequent topics over time and can explore in how many publications they have been mentioned um, over time. If people have a lot more publications, we can then also see like trends and when people started being engaged in a topic or when they stopped being engaged in a topic, uh, which is not the case for my very few publications here. We also get a network for these topics to identify which are being used together. They can also usually see lines of research for people. And also if the um, research is more interdisciplinary or monodisciplinary. For me, it's usually mostly uh, psychology, but some of the works have also received some medicine or computer science text. You have about one minute left. All right. Um, this is the almost last one. So we also include the um, sustainable development goals and provide a profile of uh, which of them are being used in the research most. And now, once people are happy with their report, they can then download it as either HTML or PDF, um, which I will not show right now because HTML looks very uh, similar to what we have seen already. So back to my presentation as the last remark, a bit of a roadmap. As I said, we are not live um, on the internet yet. Um, we will be um, starting the internal beta testing soon. Um, where I will hope uh, I hope that people will identify more fringe cases that break the app, which I have tried to find, but obviously others usually are better at that, and also get feedback from very different research disciplines and publication traditions. After that, hopefully within this year, we will have the official rollout at our university and will then also have source code and the Docker container openly available. Eventually, I hope to also improve customizability and add further features, but that is like in the further future. And with that, I would like to first um, say thank you to the OpenAlex team, because all of this would never have been uh, possible without OpenAlex. Um, I would like to thank you all for your attention. And if you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, feel free to contact me via email or post it in the Q&A right now. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sarah. This was really great. And thanks for the courage to do a live demo, which went swimmingly. <laughs> um, 